Hey guys, almost done headaches. Um, so we're going to talk about preventative treatments for all headaches. I used to kind of include these on each slide, but I felt like they were so lengthy and, and there were so many lists that students got very distracted by them. Um, so I want to talk about um, general preventative treatments for all types of headaches. Um, these can be used for most, like, I'm not saying every single type of headache we're going to use these, but um, these are used pretty much for uh, most of the, the three types of headaches that we talked about. Um, and that, you know, of course, we would love to get rid of their pain if a headache comes up, um, but it'd be great if they just never got a headache in the first place. So some people that have really chronic bad headaches, they're going to be on preventative meds. So some of the meds that we use um, are anti-seizure drugs. There's sp specifically one called topiramate um, that we use um, to prevent. Well, I have a slide about it. We'll talk a little bit more about it. I'm also using alpha and beta blockers. Again, this is confusing, but think you get your ABCs, your alpha, beta, and calcium. The alpha and beta can be used for the um, tension and migraines. Um, and some of them may be able to use for cluster, but remember with the cluster headaches, we also like that C for calcium channel blockers for prevention. Um, the other things you're going to see used are tricyclic antidepressants or TCAs, and then SSRIs or the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Um, now, exactly again, how these work, they work on nerves and stuff like that. So it might be partially that the alpha and beta blockers work on blood vessels. And um, so remember, just go back to everything we talked about when it came to what headaches are, and it might help you to think like how possibly these could help. Now, you do not need to know that in this in depth about all of these. You do not need to, like if I don't list the drugs here, like you probably do not need to know them um, unless it's something you've already learned about. Um, but just keep in mind, um, these are some possible preventatives. Um, for topiramate, um, also known as Topamax, um, this is an anti-seizure medication, but um, we also use it for tension, migraines, and clusters. Um, the thing about this is a prevention med, but it can take time for it to start to work, like two to three months. Um, so this is um, something that we definitely want to start soon, but just let the patient know it's going to take a while. The thing about most anti-seizure meds is they can make you sleepy, um, and then also topiramate can cause a low blood glucose. Um, so... Um, if it can make you sleepy and cause a low blood glucose, I would want to tell them what the signs and symptoms of that are and um, like, you know, when to report it. So remember the cold and clammy. And then also the, um, you know, if they're, if this is something that makes them sleepy, they shouldn't be operating heavy machinery or going out and trying to save the world um, while taking their topiramate. Um, so just like, you know, the caution and safety. Other teaching is don't stop suddenly. Like even if they're not taking this for seizures, it increases their threshold for seizures when you take it off, especially suddenly. Um, so definitely talk to their doctor and make sure that they're not um, making any sudden changes. There's also alternative treatments and therapies for headaches. Um, there's stuff like, I mean, because sometimes, again, the headaches are stress related. So therapy can help, um, relaxation, meditation, biofeedback, which I have videos about. I can't show you the videos, obviously, um, but biofeedback effectively is a process where um, uh, they teach you how to retrain your brain and change your response. Um, and so it's like a focusing therapy and, um, it's really interesting how it works. So if you ever want to know, you can definitely look up some of the videos that I'm sharing. I'm going to share next. Um, then acupuncture, acupressure, and hypnosis, uh, can work for some people as well. So, um, biofeedback, um, like I said, here's a video that kind of just talks about what biofeedback is. And this is a video that like displays biofeedback. And like in this video, what the lady does is, is that, um, she effectively changes her heart rate or her breathing or something like that, um, by moving the rock, these rocks. And when she, when she gets, when she relaxes herself, she finds a way to move these rocks. It's really like, I'm, I'm going to explain it so bad. It really makes sense when someone who's smart explains it. I'm just not very smart. It's, it's really, it's really well explained in the video. So I would say, go and watch this biofeedback managing stress video. And, um, I'll stop stressing you out with my poor explanations. Um, so, so the overall as the nurse, we already talked about this, but keep a diary, make sure I didn't say, yep, yeah, I didn't say dairy. Good. Um, and so keep a diary. And this is the first step. The first thing that you want to do is we have to figure out what the problem is. Um, avoiding triggers is so key for these patients. And it's hard because some of the triggers are so yummy um, or um, so exciting, relaxing. And we all need our caffeine. We, it's hard to avoid nursing school if that is our trigger. Um, but 
Um, at the end of the day, um, it's really looking at, you know, a lot of times this is what's starting all of it. Um, stress management, like the counseling and stuff like that. And then dietary counseling. So common food triggers are going to be a lot of the good stuff, chocolate, cheese, some fruits and vegetables like tomatoes and oranges, and then alcohol, especially red wine. Um, the only other thing I would say for teaching wise is you want to make sure for cluster headaches to teach them about safe oxygen use and um, things like that. All right, in my class, we would be doing headache scenarios. But anyway, um, and I know I, I in the beginning of the semester, I was like putting open-ended questions at the end and I haven't felt as motivated to do those because I have other stuff throughout. But um, yeah, I have tons of stuff on my Google Drive. You can always email me and um, I can share and connect you with those resources. So anyway, hope you have a fun time learning about headaches and hopefully you don't have a headache by the end of this lecture. See you for the next one.